when you really sit down with like an immigrant and you ask them like deep questions, you'll really understand like the reason. Hi guys, I'm Carolina and I'm here with Cynthia. Hi guys, uh, my name is Cynthia. I am 22 years old and I am from Guatemala. I'm also 22, but I was born and raised here in the US, but my parents, they're both immigrants from Mexico. Well, the reason I wanted to make this video is because I feel like right now with the current administration, and like just the people in this country specifically, they don't really understand like, immigration laws. So I'm assuming they brought you guys over here for better opportunities. I know it can be risky sometimes, but definitely there's like so many reasons behind it you know there's so many uh, things going on in like their country that they wouldn't want us to go through so I try to talk to my parents about what's going on and I try to kind of tell them like the comments that people say about like immigrants and why they would do that to their kids and they're like really quick to judge it's like well how can you do that or you don't belong here and stuff like that but there's so many reasons. So we're gonna be playing a game of Never Have I Ever. I'm gonna ask her some questions, and if we have experienced this, we're just gonna raise our hand. Never have I ever had my name mispronounced. Oh, I have. Yeah, what do people call you? Cynthia, right? Huh? But everyone like emphasizes on the T, or they're, so they're like, Cynthia. I get Caroline or Carolino. Never have I ever had someone tell me to speak English. No, not really. Have you ever uh, felt uncomfortable speaking Spanish like outside of your home? No, I feel like it's something that I've kind of became, um, like, it's part of who I am. Never have I ever worried about applying for a job. Oh, I have. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much as a DACA recipient, there's, like, certain, I guess, jobs that you cannot apply. I think they're, like, um, if I'm not mistaken, like, city jobs. Mm -hmm. Or, like, sometimes they'll be like, oh, you have to be, like, a U.S. citizen. So I was like, okay, keep scrolling. <laughs> DACA is deferred action for children that arrived at an early age. If they came before 2012, they're able to apply. But I don't know, right now, I think they're not taking any new applications. It's only renewing. So pretty much it gets you the opportunity to have a work permit. Said a lot of us came when we were kids. And most of our par like parents, they were like, oh, we want a better future for you. You know, in Central American countries, like there's so much going on that I'm pretty sure like our parents didn't want us to live through that. And so we can't, you know, we come here to, you know, just be the best version that we can be in and not trying to take away people's jobs, but rather <laughs> co like contribute to uh -huh. it, you know? Correct me if I'm wrong, but you get like work permit, right? To do yes, like jobs? Okay. And yeah. does it ever expire or anything? Or? So um, it expires every two years, which that's the thing that kind of sucks because you constantly have to be like every two years renewing it. Applying. And the process can be like long. So. Is it costly? Oh, it is. Yeah. No! That's in, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're paying like almost like seven, eight hundred dollars every two years. Never have I ever worried about what I would do in a medical emergency. I have. Yeah. Have you ever had like a situation where like... I haven't. Thank God I haven't. Oh, God. But yeah, but I always kind of keep that in like in my mind because I know that there was a point where um, we couldn't apply for medical like um, insurance or anything, anything like that. Anything. Yeah. But I know last year they passed like a like a law or like a bill that you can now apply for. Oh, that's awesome. You never have I ever worried about getting pulled over by a cop. I mean, I don't know if it's everyone, but it's just kind of scary. Yeah. I mean, that has happened to me already, but <laughs> they were pretty cool. So. When you really sit down with like an immigrant and you ask them like deep questions, you'll really understand like the reason. I mean, I can do, I can say it from experience. It's, it's very risky. It's scary for a kid. I mean, I remember when my mom told us, like, I didn't want to go. I remember I was crying. I was like, no, I want to stay. Like, you could go, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was like, leave me here. Because how but old were you? Did you say eight or seven? I was seven. Okay. I mean, I'm really thankful to my parents, you know? I never tell them, like, oh, how could you do this? Or why would you put me through this? Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you know, it's 
it's part of who I am. I'm really proud of being Latina and even try to give back to the community, trying to inform people, trying to help, you know, even like DACA recipients as well. Some of them that are not informed about certain things or they're like applying for the first time. Are you ever able to apply for citizenship at one point or is it just a constant um, process for you? I could, but I know like it's a long process. Yeah. And it's also costly to get to apply for citizenship and whatnot, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it's like a lot. So not only do you have to pay to ha be a DACA recipient every two years, you also have to be able to pay for a lawyer. I feel like a lot of people say like, oh, get in line or stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. But it's not that easy. Like you have to do so much paperwork and they have to check like your background. And I think that's something also that people don't understand. Like us as DACA recipients, like we get checked everything. Like you have to like, like not mess with like uh, the law or mm -hmm. anything like that. Cause every year you have to go through a background check. I feel like they try to vil vilify undocumented immigrants a lot of the times. There was a time where I know when uh, Trump, he kind of stopped DACA. It was crazy because I apparently like people whose DACA expire on like 2020 or something, they were not going to be able to um, reapply. And so I fell under that category. Like oh I was, God. I was so, I was so scared and yes. me and my sister fell under that category and we're like, okay, what are we going to do now? You know? So I think even now, you know, there's so many like back and forth, we'll keep it, we won't keep it. It's constantly, we have to be aware and constantly we have to be like informed of like what's going yeah, on. Yeah, so I bet. That's like, okay, that's kind of scary too, <laughs> because is that something that's like a for sure thing, you know? <laughs> what you want people to think about going into this current election? Just definitely do research, you know, go out and vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go out and vote. You know, there's so many resources out there, especially now that you can get informed. I feel like a lot of people have like that misconception of like, immigrants and DACA recipients and I feel like first they should like be informed and see like what's going on and even you know try to find people that are, are like DACA recipients as well you know they're they're more likely to like be able to talk to you and how it is and their experiences and then you'll realize that it's not as easy as it sounds at the end of the day we're all trying to just better ourselves for our family for our own selves as well I want to give back to my community too. I want to help out too, you know, it's not just me and myself, you know, but it's also like, it's stressful, but we try to stay positive. Thank you so much, Cynthia. I really appreciated you talking to me and sharing your story. I think a lot of people will really benefit from hearing. It was thank nice talking to you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>